In this video, we're going to go over the very basics of streaming with Production Truck and Blue Frame Streaming Service. To get started, we're going to create a broadcast by going up to the top menu bar, going to Broadcast, and then Create Broadcast. This is going to open up the Create Broadcast window. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select a section for our broadcast. This is a category or whatever sport you're going to do. Um, for now, we're just going to choose General for ours. And then next we're going to put in a title. We'll just call this My First Broadcast. The next section is a description text field where you can put in a description of what the broadcast is, what's happening in it, just a little bit more information for your viewers to see. Next is going to be the event date. For now, we're just going to keep the current time. But if you're scheduling this for an advance, you're going to make sure you put in the exact time and date of when this event is going to be happening. This is the date that your viewers are going to see, and they're going to be looking for this broadcast at that time. Also make sure that your time zone is also correct. Now as we scroll down more, we're going to see a lot more different options for settings down here. The first one we're going to look at is the playlist option. If you're streaming with the Blueframe streaming service, you can go in and you can create a playlist on vcloud.volarvideo.com. This is where you can group together different broadcasts based on the date, the weekend, different tournaments. You can group broadcasts together a lot easier with these playlists. So this is where you're going to go to add that broadcast to a certain playlist. Next is going to be the status option. Under here you can change it from scheduled to archived. If you're doing a normal live broadcast, you want to keep this under scheduled. But if you have already done a broadcast uh, as a offline broadcast, or if you already have the file, you'll just click on archived, and it'll give you an option to upload that file into this broadcast. But for this, we're just going to keep it as scheduled. The next option here is a text field where you can put in a message for your viewers. So if you have any technical difficulties or if the broadcast starts late, it's a little message for your viewers to see and so that they can kind of have an idea of of what's going on and what they can expect if there are issues happening. Next is the settings option down here. And here's where you can change your broadcast to audio only if you wish to only have audio. As a default, it is set to no. As well as you have your availability options here. This is where you can choose if you want the broadcast to not be available live right away or if you want to delay video. This is where you'll go to do that. Again, we'll keep this as the default, which is always available. And then we also have a second tab here next to plan, which is the general tab. Under here is where you can change your poster, your splash image, and your network ID. If you're not familiar with these, the poster is an image that is shown on the video player before your viewer clicks play on the broadcast. The splash image is very similar to the poster. It is used much less frequently, but it's very important because it will display to your viewer whenever there is a couple seconds of downtime between commercials or if the broadcast starts and stops. Just during those times where they would normally see a black screen, the splash image will appear. And lastly, your network ID. Your network ID is a short video. Uh, we recommend under 15 seconds of just a intro that your viewer will see when they first click play on the broadcast. The last section is the contact information section. This is just your contact information so that if there are ever issues with your broadcast, if we have viewers call in or if we notice something, this is so we can touch base with you and make sure that you are aware of any issue or we can help you through any problem that may come up. So you will need to have a phone number and an email address there so that you can create the broadcast. So now we'll just click create. And now we can see up on the top, we have my first broadcast. If you click on it, you can also choose any broadcast that is created that hasn't been used yet. So you can go ahead and you can create broadcast for an entire weekend or up to an entire season. And up here is where you'll go to select which one you want to make active to begin streaming to. Now before you go live, you always want to make sure that you have a video source, which you can see we do, as well as an audio input selected. And as you can see in the bottom right corner, I have my bouncing levels, so our audio is set up as well. 
Now the first thing we need to do before we go live is click test. So we're going to go up here and click test to go into test mode and then click confirm. Now you should see on the bottom right we have our status and then there it says, now it says verifying test transition. So it is starting that test mode. Now you can see that we are in our pre-broadcast test. The goal of test mode is to make sure that your network is strong and you're not going to have issues of your network dropping out or any other hardware issues before you go live. You can stay in test mode as long as you'd like and you can even stop and start test mode if you do need to stop it ahead of time. And it looks like our test mode has been running pretty smoothly for a couple minutes, so now we're going to go ahead and go live with it. So I'm going to go up to the top and click live. And it's going to ask me to confirm it again. So I'm going to click confirm. And now we have our countdown there. And now we should see the status again in the bottom right corner change to transition to live. And now we can see that our streaming has started. Now when it comes to stopping the broadcast, all we need to do is click live again. And this is going to ask us to confirm that. So we're going to go ahead and click confirm. And it'll go into the process of stopping the stream. Now what it'll do now is it's going to send the last video files up to the server. And here we can see it's going to open up a new window. Now this new window gives us the option of what we want to do with the broadcast now that we've stopped it. The first option is the not done option. This option is available so that if you ever need to stop a broadcast but you still want to return to it later. This is commonly used during weather delays when you need to stop it for even a short amount of time or for days on end. You can stop it here and then you still have the option production truck to go back live to this event. The last option is the delete option. This will send the broadcast to a trash can so that it can no longer be stream to again and it will be deleted one week from the day you delete it. So this option is for whenever you want to completely trash an event. However, if you do need to go back and save it, it is in your trash can on vcloud.volarvideo.com. And that wraps up streaming with Production Truck and the Blue Frame streaming service. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our support team at help at blueframetech.com or Check out our website, blueframetech.com, for more information.